So I actually really like Shadow the Hedgehog. Not just as a character, but this game specifically. It's not my favorite Sonic game, but I've still put hundreds of hours into getting A ranks and finding every possible story around. Why does he pump a machine gun? Why does everybody introduce themselves like they're in a Smash reveal trailer? Why does Shadow ex- Shadow the Hedgehog is really f***ing cool! If you weren't alive in the early 2000s, you just wouldn't get it. Because being edgy, being dark, and having lots and lots and lots of bad words was so popular the entire team was forced to watch these movies over and over again while making the game. And even though kid-friendly stuff was still making a lot of money, it kinda makes sense they'd try something edgier when the last game was being criticized for being too kid-friendly. This game had 1.5 million pre-orders alone, and this series was able to beat out Pokemon twice. Baby stuff just wasn't as cool anymore, and this stuff was. It's definitely a culture shock, but we finally got a 3D Sonic game with a much darker tone, and get all the answers we need to finally understand what's really going on with Shadow. Or at least, that's what was supposed to happen. Because they obviously took it too far, and if you don't understand why the game was made how it was, you'll just lump it in with all the other edgy games that came out at the same time. And even though some edgy games are still loved today, it's easier for a series that already had lots of violence and darker tones to get another game with more violence and more darker tones. Instead of going from a series that looks like this, to one that looks like this, where it just feels like they're chasing a trend. And even if you're willing to put aside how over the top it is, it's hard to get any answers about who Shadow is, if the choices you make are going to be different from what somebody else chose. Because the central mechanic of the game is that every stage has multiple ways to beat it. And even though other games do this too, instead of just giving you the ability to play the game how you want, it really doesn't feel right to nuke the city, say you're sorry, then save the world. It gets even worse when you've beaten every boss, unlocked the final battle, and the last story doesn't even connect to any of the endings in the game. Some people will tell you the true ending follows this route, and that nothing else in the entire game matters. But they either didn't actually play the game, or just weren't paying attention. Because Sonic's supposed to be here, and he's not. Black Doom is supposed to be dead, and he's not. If Shadow were a perfect little angel the entire game, you never even speak to Knuckles or Amy. Even if they decide to just come along for the ride because they had nowhere else to be, who decided to carpool with this guy? And why would he tell Shadow he lied to him about being an android if any route Eggman tells Shadow is an android ends with Shadow killing him? The only way Eggman lives is if he never tells you you're an android or he tells you the truth after you beat him. But even if Eggman survives, you're still not on the Black Comet because you only go there in four endings. And in all these timelines, either Black Doom has the final emerald or these guys do and you fight for it in the middle of the comic. But in the last story, you already have the Emerald, Sonic and Black Doom are both still alive, and you're not that deep into the comic. So while none of these endings are real, there's actually one secret timeline where everything just works out and you meet all the right characters. This route not only gives everyone a reason to be here, but it also finally explains why this stage always starts with Black Doom, because you help him twice to learn about your past and get back at gun. And the only time you help out the good guys, you're not betraying Black Doom, so he doesn't care. Obviously, once the invasion gets to this point, Shadow probably wouldn't help the invasion anymore, but he also wouldn't help stop the invasion, because he has no reason to trust Eggman yet. Until Shadow finds out, he might have been made by Eggman all along, so he can't let Omega kill Eggman, or let the gun soldiers kill Eggman. But Shadow switching loyalties like this just pisses him off, because you didn't help him in the last level, or the one before that. So he not only tries to fight you, but he has a reason to lie, because he wants to control you. And since you've been taking out gun soldiers this whole time, Black Doom wants you to go back to the Black Comet to kill more gun soldiers. But once you get there, you realize Black Doom also wants to control you, and this invasion kind of sucks. So you join up with Knuckles to find the last two emeralds, and because Sonic and Black Doom are busy, look who snuck in and stole the emerald. So you get the emerald, give a nice speech, walk away, and because you're not even that deep into the comet, you can still start the last story right where you are. Everything in this route lines up perfectly. <sighs> yeah. So in this game, there are a lot of timelines that are almost perfect, but there's always at least one small detail that ruins the whole thing. You could close your eyes and just pretend all these inconsistencies don't exist, but the real answer is a lot easier. Okay, so what if the reason nothing makes sense is because nothing is supposed to make sense, and Shadow's just stuck in a time loop? That's why whenever you get to the end of the game, you start over. No matter what you do, no matter who you help, no matter who you kill, you start over, and over, and over. And just like every other time loop, there's always something you need to do to break the cycle. And the whole point of time loops is figuring out what that something is. It doesn't make sense for the game to require all 10 endings if only one of them matters. Everybody's too busy complaining these endings are out of character without realizing that's the point. 
you're not supposed to play this until you've done all of this. Obviously Shadow wouldn't join Black Doom and nuke the planet, but even more obviously he wouldn't waste his time doing any little favor for anyone that asks and wrap it up with some big heroic speech. And this applies to every route, none of this would actually happen. Because even if you think Shadow wouldn't choose a side, telling Shadow to not take a side is now your side. You are the third choice. And you should prefer the neutral missions because they're your choice. They're the most direct, they're the most familiar, there's no scavenger hunts, and there's none of this. Shadow isn't a good guy, Shadow isn't a bad guy, but Shadow also isn't the guy you want him to be. Just because I want Shadow to be a badass doesn't mean I get to tell him that he can't drive a race car. This is who I am. There's a lot of different time loops out there, and this one is so well known, the trope is literally named after it. But there's one big difference with Shadow's loop. Nobody remembers anything, Maria. not even Shadow. Who am I? And why can't I remember anything? This kind of time loop is a lot harder to pull off, because if nothing ever changes, how can the loop end? Which is why most loops either have someone that remembers everything, or some way to send information between the loops. Otherwise, nothing changes for a really long time. But even though the characters don't remember anything, the game still does. And if you've been paying attention, you already know how. So did everybody just forget that every ending has the Chaos Emeralds in it? Or that Shadow needs the Emeralds to regain his memories? But this is literally what the Chaos Emeralds were made for. Most people think the Chaos Emeralds are just batteries because they supply power. But if you ever played this game, you'd know there's a lot more to it, because the Emeralds need to be charged. And this is where people get it wrong, when really this has never meant this at all. And it actually means this. The Emeralds only provide energy because they're storing thoughts and then converting them into power. Imagine a flash drive that could charge your phone just by saving fanfiction on it. This is why Black Doom doesn't want to kill everyone, just the people getting in his way. Because with a few exceptions, humans have the most chaotic thoughts and do the most chaotic things. And there's an entire planet of them right here, so taking the emeralds and the power source that charges them would mean infinite energy. But there's one small problem. Black Doom didn't have an army 50 years ago, and if he did, it wasn't good enough to take over Earth yet. So he teamed up with the smartest dude on the planet by promising him immortality or something, just so he could use Shadow in 50 years to take over the planet and steal the emeralds but you can't outsmart the smartest dude on the planet. And now Shadow has free will and a Mary Sue. So now all this happens, and there's one small detail that not only proves Shadow's alive, but also how this game could be a time loop to begin with. Normally falling to Earth lights you on fire, but even if going super changes your chemical makeup, it's still pretty weird there's this big dramatic flash and a twinkle sound. Obviously Shadow survived because he's still here, and while some people say it's because of Eggman, there's a real answer too. So we all know power scaling in these games is impossible, and it doesn't really matter because people are just going to get it wrong anyway. But we do know these two fight a lot, and Shadow's always wearing these things anyway. And even though removing these isn't the same thing as going super, it's still pretty busted. And then taking them off while super would be even more busted. Put all this together with a double chaos control, and this has never happened before. Shadow clearly didn't need Sonic's help to warp the arc. And Sonic being so new to Chaos Control definitely didn't help. So instead of creating a blue portal from a balanced and normal powered double Chaos Control, Shadow ended up making a weird purple one that has definitely never been referenced again. But because Sonic was there and had no idea what he was doing, he broke it. So Shadow didn't just get sent through time, time got sent through Shadow, and it split his timeline into a million pieces. This is why every route feels so out of character, because every timeline is just a different part of Shadow. And the only way to fix it is the same way it broke, the Chaos Emeralds. But these things are running on empty, so every time one version of Shadow makes it through the entire game, the Chaos Emeralds absorb everybody's thoughts and charge up a little bit, but because it's still not enough, they send you back. Over and over and over. So this time loop would have lasted almost forever if it weren't for every part of Shadow only getting one of his brain cells, which made every timeline as chaotic as possible. And eventually the emeralds do more than just fill up, they overflow. And now all these extra memories are floating around, Shadow gets his memories back, and Eggman realizes you killed him in half the timelines. What I said about having created you. And now we're at the real ending of the game, the best part of any time loop, getting the high score. Because by now, you know every stage like the back of your hand, so you get to play them all in a row. There's fun dialogue with all the characters, and once all of this is finally over with, we're rewarded with the secret answer to the most important question about Shadow. 
So unless you really want to keep trusting a book with an entire web page dedicated to how wrong it is, or if you want to trust the same guy that hasn't worked at Sega in almost 20 years, you could also just play the game for what it is. Obviously this game won't appeal to a lot of people, and it especially won't appeal to a lot of Sonic fans that expect something else, because all 3D Sonic games have one big secret. 